Jo gets her fix here. Milton Keynes Tesco Extra. A 24-hour temple of consumption, stocking 40,000 product lines, from bulbs to barbecues. At stores like these, the new buzz phrase is non-food, which means anything you can't eat. In other words, nearly everything. The non-food market, in the way we define it, is bigger than the food market. So suddenly, Tesco is shooting at an opportunity that is twice the size of if you say you're a food business. And they're gunning for it in a big way. It's predicted by next year, Tesco will sell more non-food products than any other UK retailer. Already they sell more chart CDs than Woolworths, more children's clothes than M&S, more toiletries than Superdrug. And their latest venture is paint. Watch out, B&Q. Tesco are trouncing their rivals because they sweat every one of their 24 million square feet of space to the max. Each square foot in a Tesco yields 22 pounds and 9p a week. That compares to 17 pounds 79 at Sainsbury's and only 10 pounds 30 at Marks and Spencer. So what is Tesco's secret? To achieve those high sales densities, you need to keep the shelves well stocked, you need to make sure that the whole supply chain is working efficiently and that the product can be whisked through all the way from, from the farms and the factories right through their supply chain and onto the shelf with the minimum of effort and minimum fuss. If rival stores really want to compete, they have to match this. A system Tesco call continuous replenishment. This is its heart. A warehouse a quarter of a mile long, housing 10,000 products. And running a fleet of lorries second only to the Royal Mail. Each store in the Tesco empire can receive up to seven deliveries a day, which means less space wasted on storage, more room devoted to selling. And when the goods hit the floor, there's another Tesco innovation known as one-touch stocking, basically shelves with wheels. The produce these days tends to be merchandised or displayed on uh, wheelable trolleys so that once it lands on the store, you just whip it straight from the loading bay straight onto the shop floor. That is reducing the amount of product handling. And every time a product is handled, there is a cost, there's a labour cost involved. So one of the operational efficiencies behind the Tesco operation is the move to what we call one-touch stock. It's only touched once, physically by members of staff as it's moved through that, that supply chain at each stage. Little tricks like this make Tesco's massive stores so profitable. They've already got 100 Tesco hypermarkets with hundreds more to come. This year, Tesco will open something like one million square feet of space devoted to non-food in the UK. And the hypermarket side of the business is actually now making more money than the entire Sainsbury's group. And it won't be too long before the biggest proportion of Tesco space is in the hypermarket format. What it means for the competition is that life is going to get tougher and that they're going to have to either lose sales or become more efficient in their own right and give the customer a better deal. Specialist retailers like Dixon's, Boots, these, these, these retailers are going to have a tough time as Tesco gather momentum and they take with them their philosophy of um, higher volumes, lower prices, higher volumes, lower prices. Um, and uh, the, the, the net result of all of that will be that uh, some of these specialist stores will find it hard eventually to compete. And the list of competitors who better beware is growing as Tesco enter new markets. As well as the usual CDs and electronics, there's mortgages and houses, cuddly toys, of course, musical instruments, holidays and travel insurance, wills and funerals. What next? This is the first ever Tesco wedding.
OK, it's between two members of staff, but now they've walked down the aisle, garden furniture, seeing as you're asking, will there be queues of couples wanting to get hitched at the checkout? I wouldn't like to commit us here, but uh, if anybody wants to get married in, te in, in their local Tesco store, I'm sure we'd be only too happy to let them do it. Would, uh, would you think we're safe to say that? I would think, we're, yeah, we'll do that. We're talking cradle to grave. Now Tesco wants to boldly go where no retailer has gone before. We don't need to be madly looking for new areas. I tell you where we'd like to be if we, if, if we could find the way to do it. We'd like to do more on education. Tesco schools. And the other areas around health. Tesco operations. What? Buy one, get one free. It's this unstoppable ambition that's got them everywhere, targeting everyone and flogging everything. Like it or not, Tesco have become Britain's first supermarket superpower. But that comes at a price. Something has to give, uh, and in the long term, what will give is the competition. If it's bad for the likes of Asda and Sainsbury caught in the glare of the Tesco juggernaut, then it spells disaster for the smaller independent stores. This is the shopkeeper's worst nightmare. A Tesco moves in next door and nicks all your customers. Rahul Patel had been running Portland Food and Wine in London for 20 years, when suddenly the red, white and blue machine arrived. They opened on a Monday and uh... Almost uh, immediately, we saw that there was a significant drop in the customer flow. And at the end of the day, when we cashed up, we realised that we had dropped up 25% of our trade. Six months later, and the exodus continues. We counted heads for 20 minutes and saw three times as many customers for Tesco than for their independent rival. The final score, 78 to 25. And there's not much Mr Patel can do. Something like milk, for example, I know that Tesco sell this for 33 peat, whereas you sell it for 39. That's still a big difference, isn't it? Yes. Uh, well, we can't buy it uh, as cheap as Tesco, so we have to maintain some sort of margin. And uh, customers will pay a little bit extra because in the West End, they are always in a hurry and they want to nip in and out, and uh, there's always a queue at Tesco's. We have a Mr Patel who's got a shop in, uh, in London, and he says that the presence of a Tesco next door is basically killing his business. But if you, you know, the people who are shopping in the Tesco could easily go to Mr Patel. It's just next door. They choose not to. You could close us down and force them to go to Mr Patel. Sounds a bit like a police state, but you could. They're choosing not to. I think all of us, you know, the world changes. Nothing is forever. But as more and more of us join the ranks of the red, white and blue, will we really be happy with a brave new world of complete Tesco domination? Our legacy as a generation to uh, my grandchildren eventually will be uh, uh, a desert of a village high street with Tesco in it, uh, building societies and hospice stores. Back in Bicester, there's a new supermarket due to be built on this site. And guess who wants it? Yes, Tesco. That would be the final straw for the desperate souls trapped in their version of a consumer nightmare. I will be very, very angry if Tesco's wins that bid. Even if they put in the most competitive bid, I would like my local council to not allow that to go through. And I would go out of my way to vote for someone who made sure that Tesco's didn't win that bid. Next week, more and more parents are spending their retirement savings on grown-up kids forced to live at home because of debts and high property prices. That's honey, we can't get rid of the kids.